Portfolio Builder members, as you know, we've been recommending all year to have a 5% allocation to cryptocurrencies as a hedge against central banks getting out of control with printing cash. And guess what they're about to do? They are about to push rates to zero and print a ton of money to fuel a trade war with China. So uh, Bitcoin just tanked about 20% in the last day and went from 13.5 down to 10.5 as of recording this video. If you're under invested in cryptocurrencies and have less than a 5% portfolio position, this is definitely an easy play that we highly recommend in all of our programs. So we'll take a look at how that plays into the grand scheme of things in a little bit, but I just wanted to start off today's video with the basic message that the US-China trade war is highly unlikely to de-escalate. De and even if they paper up some sort of truce, the underlying problems between the US and China are not going away. And we're at a critical juncture where China is on track to overtake America as the leading power in the world. So there's just really no option but to rise the tensions and most likely see a lot of sanctions going on against China. Now, with that said, I'd like to take a look at our portfolio growth in the basic program. Uh, you can see we started the month out, or at least on the 7th, at a 7.7% return with $41,000 profit. By the 10th, it jumped to 7.9 and a $42,900 profit. Went down slightly on the 12th, down to 7.78 jumped to 7.9 by the 17th, or rather the 14th. On the 17th, we jumped to 8.19% for a $44,500 profit. This was a large jump in value for a portfolio up to 8.43% or to $46,000 gain. Uh, this was our single most profitable trade period and you can see that we predicted the Fed would launch the SPY into all-time highs. And sure enough, it did. That pushed our profit from uh, 8.4 to 9.37. Now, we're trying to make 1% a month. So to make that in three days is phenomenal and not something that we're trying to do very often. And then uh, the next trade pushed us up to 9.47 for a $52,000 total profit. And as of writing that, we've given a little bit back. We're still sitting on that 9.04% return and a $49,000 profit, all from selling covered calls against the SPY. And a quick plug, if you are on a free trial or an expired trial, or you've purchased the basic program and you're interested in upgrading, call Dean or Chris. First of all, they can save you a lot of money on the basic product. Plus, if you have purchased any products from us in the past, you can get a refund on that earlier purchase and upgrade to the Whale Club for a lifetime membership of only $4,997. So considering our basic programs now at $2,000 a year and our Diamond Clubs at $5,000 a year, that is a huge amount of savings and you'll never owe us a penny again. So a quick review of what's going on in our basic portfolio. We're long the SPY. We're selling covered calls. This week, we've been relatively aggressive selling out-of-the-money covered calls, and that's because we didn't want to miss out on any bobbling up and down at the highs. And so that is our expectation that the SPY will be trading in this 290 to 295 range until things start to really escalate. And again, if you have been following our content, Escalation is great. Volatility is great when you're in the business of selling options, and that's what our product does. So currently, we're long the 294, or rather, we're short the 294 covered call, and we're long the SPY. This trade expires tomorrow on 628, and so we will most likely move into a relatively defensive covered call that's in the money on Friday and write it so that it expires all the way to either Monday or Wednesday. And the reason why is because the presidents of China and U.S. are meeting over the next several days, and if things don't go well, we might just get an angry tweet from Trump 
which could send stocks spiraling. Now this tweet would most likely be some sort of threat towards China. So that's why to hedge our risk in this portfolio, uh, over the past several weeks, we've been taking a part of our profits from the credits we're taking in and reinvesting them into longer duration, further out expiration date on FXI. This is the large cap ETF that tracks Chinese companies and quite frankly could be deemed illegal by the United States and send this ETF to zero. So that would be a huge return on these put options even if the fear of that was put on the table. So currently again we're long the SPY selling the covered call for consistent returns and then taking part of those profits and going short China with longer duration put options. So expect something like that in tomorrow's trade alert. And again, if you are expired, you get these cool updates, but you don't get the trade alerts, and especially not when they're initially released. So uh, make sure to upgrade if you haven't yet. Now this is a look at our Tuesday trade alert, the Diamond Club. This is a different program than our basic membership. And again, when you do upgrade to basic, you get 30 days free into both our Diamond Club on Tuesday and our Whale Club on Thursday. This strategy is almost the same, uh, except a couple differences. Rather than trading the SPY, we're getting almost four times the yield from Apple. So Apple's a great company, top position in the SPY in the QQQ, number two spot just under Microsoft. It's a favorite of most hedge funds. It's a favorite of many retail investors. It's a favorite of pension funds. And it's the number one position in Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. So you really couldn't get a better stock, individual stock to invest in in the long run than Apple. Plus, U.S. has just stabbed one of its biggest competitors in the back, Huawei. Now, could this cause some short-term pain for Apple? Sure, it sure could. But because it's already had a lot of volatility in the last 12 months, the prices on options on Apple have skyrocketed. And so quite frankly, this is the best deal in town when you get the bottom line America's protecting this company. They're going after its competitors, Huawei. And the covered call income is about four times out of the SPY. So certainly we can generate a bigger profit with more downside protection in this portfolio. Now the downside is Apple is less diversified than the SPY. Now in this program, unfortunately, there's no way to short Huawei, uh, which is the counterpart to the U.S., of Apple. Uh, so instead we're just buying put options on Apple that have a further duration than the call option we're selling. And so part of the profits are now also being invested into GDX. So same idea as the cryptocurrency play. Gold miners, they'll be the last to make the big run but they have the furthest to go up. So we have GLD and GDX. GLD tracks the price of gold and just invest in gold from the fund, whereas GDX is a basket of mining companies. So obviously, unless the market thinks there's going to be a long-term increase in demand, the mining companies will not go up as much as the spot price of gold. And on the other side, the central banks are the biggest buyers of gold. So they have a ceiling on what they may be willing to pay for gold and unlimited capital to purchase this gold. Uh, or relatively unlimited. So that's why I like the call option on GDX with part of the profits from the covered call we're writing on Apple. And again, this is on Tuesdays and it's only available to paid members. So if you're a basic customer who's upgraded, you will get this for 30 days free as a bonus. Now, if you're already a basic member and you've now expired on your free trial, don't worry, you can get a refund on your initial purchase and upgrade and just call Dean or Chris at either of those numbers to get, to get in there and not miss on our trades next week. Finally, this is probably the most important portfolio that everyone should be adding to their strategy right now. This is our Thursday trade. We call it the Whale Club because from time to time, when these stocks trade at a discount, it will purchase either Amazon or Google. Now to have 100 shares of Amazon, you're looking at a $190,000 investment. Not everybody has that kind of cash. So uh, from time to time, you may not be able to follow these trades, but most of the time you can, because we're simply buying the TLT, which you can pick up 100 shares of 
for only $13,000. Now, at this point in time, this portfolio is simply long the TLT, and I'm actually recommending that you have half your capital in this portfolio and half your capital in either the diamond or basic. And if you wanted to split that up into a quarter quarter, it would make a lot of sense. At the end of the day, you're gonna have a very well hedged equity portfolio that is essentially neutral. And then you're gonna have a long bond position. And so you'll be set up to do very well if things escalate between the US and China, but you won't lose if the market heads higher because of a trade resolution, which I think is highly unlikely. And we'll get into that. So these are the three portfolios. They again trade Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the basic program, Tuesday for the diamond, and Thursday for the whale. And if you do upgrade from a free trial or an expired trial, you'll get 30 days free access to all of it. And again, if you have bought the basic and your free trial has ended in those other programs, call Dean and Chris, they can work out a deal and get you upgraded. At this point in time, it's very important to really have your portfolio split so that you really have minimal risk going into the month of July when I'm expecting, guess what? The announcement of more tariffs. They'll most likely start off slow, like 10%, which Trump came out and said today. But I highly doubt that will be enough to make the Chinese move. And I don't think it'll be the last thing America does to put pressure on the Chinese. From the Chinese point of view, the Communist Party has a monopoly on a huge population of what I would consider slave labor. These folks have no choice. If they don't take the jobs that the Chinese government has set up, they will live in poverty. If they do take the jobs, they pay almost 75% of their income to taxes in one way or another. 45% is just a direct tax to the government. But then the employer has to pay around 15% of the net pay to what they call social insurance. And the employee also has to put another 25% par partially into housing insurance and partially into medical insurance. And so this is how they are keeping this housing bubble going. This is how they keep their GDP numbers high. They just keep building uh, as many structures as they possibly can build, even if no one lives in them or uses them. And what's going to happen is as the Americans tighten and tighten and tighten, it's going to cause their domestic economy to implode. So that's one reason we like the put options in our whale club on Alibaba, uh, which is being kind of laid out as a floor of put options so that we can jump into Amazon at a discount. Because don't get me wrong, even though I do think China will lose this battle, their main goal is to take down America with it. So a stock market crash is definitely in the cards right now. And the big theme right now is censorship. In China, if you try to speak out against the government, not only do they automatically delete the content, that's right, they have direct access to everything in China. All of our products are banned. Our internet has nothing to do with their internet. Theirs is a closed door, censored internet that includes all the social media, the chats, the text messages, the phone calls. They have a million people listening to everything. And their biggest fear is a repeat of Tiananmen Square, which guess what is happening in Hong Kong and Taiwan right now, which they are trying to take control over and expand their borders. Meanwhile, we've also seen Twitter having a lot of influence from China they were banning people speaking out against the Communist Party during the Tiananmen Square. They've been uh, doing a lot of shady things. And now we have a note that they're going to start to censor Donald Trump's tweets. That will go over well. In this snapshot, the Baosheng Bank went bankrupt recently. And this is a good canary in the coal mine that there is more trouble ahead in China little G20 cheat sheet. Main one is Trump G trade. Now, it's illegal to have Twitter in China, but yet this Hu Jin guy, uh, who clearly represents Communist Party, he gets to have a Twitter account uh, with some huge amount of followers. Who knows what they pay uh, Twitter to have this right? 
Uh, two days before meeting President Xi, real Donald Trump claimed to have Plan B and threatened new tariffs. This is a very unfriendly move and will have a negative impact for sure. So my read on this is that the Chinese want to play victim. They want to aggravate Trump and they want him to lose his temper and essentially create chaos in the markets. And they believe this could help uh, make it so he was, is not reelected in 2020 which will help them get someone they do want into power. Now, don't forget, Joe Biden's son took $1.5 billion in a hedge fund from the Bank of China, and he has no experience running hedge funds. So they have their hands on everything. The car sector is often used as a leading indicator for the health of the economy. And what we've seen is a lot of weakness in the car sector. China says they would be happy to continue trade talks if we lift all tariffs and remove all bans on Huawei. Uh, but when you dig into what this trade war is all about, a lot of it's about the race to 5G. And the big difference is 4G, you might be able to download a two-hour movie in like six minutes. On 5G, you'll be able to do it in three and a half seconds. So this is huge. This is a huge battle. One YouTuber estimated that the 4G race was worth $100 billion a year, which America won, but the 5G will be worth $500 billion a year and 3 million plus jobs. So it's critical that America does not lose this race. And Huawei, while it may not have the software or security, apparently it is way ahead in the hardware. Larry Kudlow was on TV today saying that the U.S. may move ahead on additional Chinese tariffs. Wall Street Journal article, Huawei Telecom gear much more vulnerable to hackers than rivals equipment. Project Veritas banned by Vimeo after uploading undercover Google expose. So these guys uh, get undercover people in all sorts of uh, media organizations primarily and tries to find corruption and censorship and and doing so continues to get blocked and banned everywhere so just following up on this uh, trend of censorship u.s still insisting on structural changes on intellectual property enforcement mechanisms key to any trade deal of course china is not going to punish themselves uh, for their own plan to steal everything U.S. tried to stop China acquiring world-class chips. China got them anyway from AMD. Technology transfer story from Wall Street Journal. Cash is piling into the LQD. That's the institutional grade ETF uh, bond fund. When we defeat Mr. Trump in this election, we're going to end his corporate socialism and use those resources to create a 21st century economic bill of rights that benefits all people. Bernie Sanders, so of course, predicting the next president will be critical to our portfolio strategy. So definitely following the news on that. I think Trump has it pretty much beat as long as things aren't too nasty economically uh, domestically in America when we get to the election period. But if we're going to escalate this trade war, that could seriously put a dent on things. And I think the Chinese know that. So it'll be very interesting to see just how ballsy Trump wants to get, uh, because really now is the time to act. If he cannot put the pressure on now, there will be no time to do it later uh, unless he's going to wait until after the 2020 election. The Long View asks, will another 10% on China get 50 base point, basis points from the Fed? Goldman Sachs is expecting 25 next month and 25 the following. Pelosi Folds confirms House will reluctantly pass Trump's emergency border bill. She says one country, two systems is the only recourse for Taiwan. Then Hong Kong protests hit again. Now the world sees just how incredibly incongruent the formula is with the democracy and disingenuous it is about the CCP's goals. And so uh, imagine the 1.3 billion people who have no voice in China starting to get rumors of what's going on. Now the 
the TV stations in China have gone out and told all their people that these protests were pro-extradition. The exact opposite. I don't think they're that stupid. And I think that China's biggest fear is nearing, and that's its own people revolting against the Communist Party. Uh, but they've done a good job actually doing the opposite so far, at least for those in the Tier 1 cities who get nice paying jobs, nice houses. Uh, they are starting to nationalize, ban U.S. products, and burning flags on the street. Now, of course, these Tier 1 cities represent a small part of the actual population of China. Most of them are still very poor, and it's only in these top Tier 1 cities that uh, we see their top performing jobs, nice looking cities, fancy lights, all that jazz. So uh, when you tax your population at around 75%, you can invest in a few nice cities. It reminds me a lot of the Hunger Games and the way that they uh, organize their media and their cities. The elite and the blue collar worker. This article from Zero Hedge was pointing out that 30% of the S&P 500's revenues were from, uh, or rather, let me rephrase that, of the international profits of the S&P 500, 30% of those came from China. And actually, if you go look at Apple's market share, a third of their business, uh, at least the phones, maybe not the revenue, but a third of their phones are sold in China. So if the trade war does escalate, whether this means a renewed collapse in Chinese iPhone sales or the boycott of Kentucky Fried Chicken, nationalism driven by Beijing, sparkled by President Trump's trade war, is likely to have a significant effect on Wall Street's performance. As a reminder, 30% of the S&P 500's revenues from international sales in 2017 came from China, a number that is set to tumble. This was a little piece from a Twitter guy who's Pointing out the U.S. wants the dollar to fall so that uh, this will make exports cheaper for us. Uh, but it says the U.S. wants the dollar to fall, but inflation and activity in major trading partners are far weaker. So this is difficult to achieve. Even with the Fed's big dovish shift this year, rate differentials of the USD versus the G10 are only back to 2016 levels. The dollar is trapped. And the only big point of this is that it points out the weakness globally in growth. Here's the Bloomberg article about Huawei having staff who worked with the Chinese government. But of course, we know uh, that only 1% of Huawei is owned by the CEO, and it's only while he's alive. If he were to ever walk away, he loses that, just like all the employees. So it's really a profit-sharing plan and not an equity there's really no owning equity in China. It's communist community share. And so that's why these ETFs that they are using to funnel US dollars straight out of the retirement plans from unknowing American retirees is going to explode. And I believe there's a high risk that any kind of ETF that holds any sort of Chinese equity could be quickly banned if this continues to escalate. And thus why we like the short uh, FXI and the short BABA positions in our basic portfolio for FXI with puts and Alibaba in our whale club on the Thursday trade with puts. Interesting chart showing the bond optimism. And so we're getting back near these excessive uh, optimism levels. Typically, when you get to this level, it will overshoot. So if trade war escalates, where's the safe place to hide money? You got three spots. The best spot is the bond market. The second best spot is the gold market. And the third best place is Bitcoin. And so your portfolio allocations should be accordingly uh, about 99% bonds, 98% bonds, 1% gold, and 1% uh, crypto. Makes a lot of sense. I look forward to speaking with Prime Minister, Minister Modi about the fact that India, for years, having put very high tariffs against the United States, just recently increased the tariffs even further. So some, some more tariff wars with the major power. 
interesting timing of Wall Street Journal headlines citing Chinese officials right as President Trump lands, giving him, I think she meant, less than 24 hours before meeting to decide whether he'll lift Huawei ban, which he's open to, and to remove all tariffs, which he's not. And of course, they're not really open to uh, lifting anything on Huawei because this is all about trying to get to the 5G rollout before China does amongst other things. So I highly doubt uh, that anything more than kicking the can down the road could be a positive outcome. Goldman warns risk of market crash is highest since the financial crisis, nearing 60%. If you do look at it during the great financial crisis, GFC is the acronym people use. It shot all the way to 90% during that period. Uh, so risks are getting higher. We're entering another blackout period, and there's a host of risks coming to market, uh, and stocks hate uncertainties. So this little flow chart did a good job of mapping out these events. This is a little too hard to read, so you can definitely join our Telegram chat to get a copy of that. Quick look at stocks. A uh, little pullback in the SPY this week. We've been selling out of the money covered calls, so we have big profits on the covered call side, but we've been having a little bit of drawdown on the SPY. Of course, I'm expecting this to bounce in this range until the bad news hits. Once it does hit, that's when we can really start printing ourselves big paychecks. Uh, as volatility increases, the option prices skyrocket. It allows us to start selling in the money covered calls and make more money than we are selling these out of the money covered calls, which means we get downside protection. Plus, if the market goes higher, we get a huge profit. So we're looking forward to some tensions rising. Look at the TLT getting ready to break into a new high as a safe haven. Now, 143 would just get us back to the 2016 level. If this trade war lasts a long time, which it very well could go all the way into the next election and into the next term, TLT could have a lot longer ride ahead, and this would spell big trouble for stocks. Here's a look at FXI, large cap Chinese ETF, the biggest, $5 billion in funds, although there's a ton of these ETFs. Uh, they are at a high risk. This is a super concentrated, only Chinese company, ADR uh, deposit thing. There's no accounting their companies. You get a little 30-page doc. You have to trust them. But the problem is there's no real laws in China. Uh, YouTube University, the doctors from China can't even be nurses in America. It's a big joke. And so I, I think that this plan of China's that has created these huge GDP numbers from creating a gigantic infrastructure bubble uh, is going to implode on itself. Apple is doing well this week, actually outperforming the SPY. Our trade was a at the money covered call right at 200. So we're doing great. Uh, couldn't have had a better return on that portfolio uh, from the covered call Apple side. Again, we are layering into these put options. I do suspect Trouble ahead for equities if I'm at all right with the trade war escalating. And so that's why we're loading up on these put options and really on alert to start selling covered calls that are in the money instead of out of the money. But we need volatility to pop before it's lucrative to do that. If we did it right now, we'd have downside protection, but with no profit. Here's a look at GLD and again, I believe essential banks may slow down the growth of GLT relative to GDX in the event of a long-term trade war with a lot of money printing from the central banks and low interest rates. And so the idea is we have to think that the long-term demand for gold will rise, which makes these mining companies ultra valuable. So currently trading at 25, back in 2012, it hit 66. So call options could make an absolute killing on this. In our Tuesday trades, we're taking part of the profits from the covered call and buying these call options. Here's Alibaba. Again, if we wreck the Chinese domestic economy, Alibaba is going to crash. It's already showing signs of crashing. It's moving its listing to Hong Kong, trying to raise $20 billion. It sees the trouble ahead. It's probably very overstretched. 
and at risk of a recession from the Chinese domestic economy. Which is why we've been layering into the put options on this in our Thursday trade alert. And again, if you have missed out on the ride in Bitcoin, time to buy back. My son actually took some profits at 13500 and reinvested it today, right when we put this trade alert out. So fair disclaimer. The big buyer of these Bitcoins have been the Asians in Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, who are worried about the value of their currencies losing value as the central banks lower rates, print cash, and devalue their currencies to fight the trade war. Uh, so from Hong Kong and Taiwan's point of view, they're more concerned about uh, being taken over by China, and the Chinese can clearly see that they actually are devaluing their currency to offset the tariffs. So that's a wrap for today's trade alert update. We will have no update on Fridays. We'll be taking the evening off. We'll be closely watching the markets for any emergency alerts. However, uh, the next update is due tomorrow at noon Eastern. So thanks again. We really appreciate your business. If you want to upgrade, either from a free trial or an expired trial to the basic program, Call Dean or Chris, 505-322-7515 or 760-803-5335. Thanks again. We really appreciate you and looking forward to a new trade alert tomorrow at noon Eastern.